Yes, brother. My name is Paul. I live here and I'm a manager. I have about three parts I want to ask you. Um, I've been storing it up for three hours. The first one is there are two types of death. There's a spiritual death and there's a physical death. And a brother was asking about uh, if you leave Islam, um, you should be put to death for this. Um, in the Christian Bible, God says, if you don't know me, I don't know you. And I think those simple words sum up a spiritual death, that when the person who has chosen to ignore God and is standing before God on judgment day, God will just simply say, you didn't know me and I don't know you. That is a spiritual death. I just say that as a comment. My wife and I were walking through the streets of Dubai and we were past a CD and a book about Islam. I've moved from Singapore. I'm British, but I've lived in Singapore for 23 years. I've rubbed shoulders with many Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists. And I'm pleased to say I've learned more about my fellow mankind having been away from Britain than ever I would have learned in Britain. This thing that you're doing tonight is wonderful. And I wish I had had this many years before. One of the signal absences in this treatise on Islam was nobody talked about the devil, nobody talked about sin. And I was puzzled because in Christianity, it is always constantly the fight between good and bad. In the Old Testament, which was the first thing that I learned, there were a lot of similarities with Islam. People are slaughtering cows and sheep and goodness knows what to atone for their sins. And the more I, I gather, the worse the sin, the more animals that were killed. And in the big temple courtyards, there were just vast areas for burning these animals on the altars. Why has that stopped? If Islam is drawing on a lot of the Old Testament things, what I know as the Old Testament. Abraham had a wife called Sarah. How do you know this? You know it because it was recorded. Would you agree, therefore, in the New Testament that the uh, people who wrote and recorded those things, are they telling the truth? I'm asking you a question which I hope you'll answer in a minute. Are they telling the truth? Or is this made up? And therefore, why are we not even today slaughtering animals left, right, and center to atone for our sins because there is another forgiveness? The last point I want to make is I was absolutely amazed. I learned this in Singapore that there were historians at the time Jesus was observed to have been crucified who were not Christians. There was no reference to what religion they had, but they recorded that this man Jesus lived. Yes, we know he lived. You acknowledge as Muslims that he lived, but he was observed to have been crucified. And it is recorded in the Bible by the same people who I'm asking you, do you believe that Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John existed? Was this a made-up story? Because if all the other things have been observed, Jesus said this or Jesus said that in the red writing in the Bible, um, where is the line between something happened and something didn't happen? I'm sorry, it's a long question. No wrong. I answer the question the brother asked. A very good question. He said that in my talk, for example, I mentioned that Abraham had another wife by the name of Sarah. May peace be upon them. How did I come to know? from the Bible. So he's asking me that many things of Islam, there are similarities in the Old Testament. Now when we go to the New Testament, how do I pick and choose? Why don't I believe in the writers? Brother, anything, whether it's part of the Old Testament or New Testament, whether it's part of a Hindu scripture or any other scripture, I as a Muslim, I consider, as far as I'm concerned, I'll come up with the others later on, as far as the Muslim is concerned, this Quran is my Furqan. Furqan is the criteria to judge right from wrong. 
and our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Balligu anni walo aya. Propagate even if you know one verse. And there is no problem if you quote from the scriptures of the Ahli Kitab. Now, as far as the scriptures of the Jews and Christians are concerned, there are three rules to be followed. Rule number one, if it matches with the Quran, we have got no objection in accepting that portion to be the word of God. Point number one. Point number two, if it goes against the Quran, we reject it. It cannot be the word of God. Irrespective who wrote it, Paul, Matthew, Mark, John, whoever. Rule number one, if it matches with the Quran, because this has been proved to be the word of God as far as we are concerned. Scientifically, everything. Even a logical person, if he finds out this is the word of God, and then if he compares whatever matches with the thing which has been proved, like this is our ruler. You know, we have a measuring tape. Once it has been confirmed this is correct, then we use this as a furkan, as our mizan. So what is there in the Old Testament, New Testament, Buddhist scripture, Hindu scripture, what matches with the Quran? We have got no objection accepting that is the word of God. What is contrary to the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, we reject it. It can't be true. Now what is not matching with the Quran, but not even contradictory, it is optional. You understand optional. Optional means may be right, may be wrong. So those things which are mentioned in the Bible, Old and New Testament, which match with the Quran is what I quoted today. 100%. We have got no objection in accepting this portion of the word of God. There are many things which go against the Quran, which I can give a talk on differences between Islam and Christianity. There are certain things which are optional. Neither go against the Quran is neither matching with the Quran. So these portions which is neither going against the Quran or matching with the Quran are optional for us. So those writings which go against the Quran, I cannot accept the word of God. So all those authors of the New Testament, which go against the teachings, of the Quran, I reject it. What matches, I say can be the word of God. What doesn't match, neither goes against, is optional. As far as a non-Muslim is concerned, we use logic. If you keep the Quran aside, today, due to advancements of science and technology, today is the age of science and technology. Now, if you use the yastik of science and technology to the Bible, you will find hundreds of mistakes about the creation of the universe, there's a mistake. The Bible says, as I mentioned earlier, that Almighty God in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 16 to 19, He created two great lights, the greater light, the sun to rule the day, the lesser light, the moon to rule the night. So moon doesn't have a light of its own. It's a contradiction. It's a scientific error. There are various such errors. Various. Only in Genesis chapter number 1, you can find plenty errors. There are mathematical contradictions. There are scientific errors. There is obscenity. So leave aside Quran, even if a normal human being who keeps his mind open and reads, we can surely not agree, this portion can surely not be the word of God. If there are scientific errors, if there are contradictions, if there's pornography, any normal human being who has an open mind will never accept this thing to be the word of God. The remaining things become optional. So this is what we use, brother, as a strategy to identify. So a student of comparative religion Whenever he picks up a scripture, he uses the strategy and he tries and reads the scripture and then he analyzes how good, how authentic is the scripture, brother. So this if we use with the Bible also, you find there are many errors, there are many contradictions. Even if you don't have the Quran, a normal human being cannot accept this to be the word of God as a whole. But because Quran says that there was a revelation given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, what we say, that portion which matches with the Quran, we have got no objection in accepting as the word of God. Hope that answers the question. It partly answers the question. The point I was trying to get to was about sin and the devil. The point I made was in the Islamic literature I was given, there was barely any reference to sin, the forgiveness of sin, the condemnation that we would all feel if we had no way to be forgiven for our sin. This was one part of the question. Yes, therefore one question at a time, it will be better. Yes. As you told that you gave a short speech, I was trying to yes. cover as much as I could. I apologize for my no long problem, question. No problem, brother. So brother, that was a question that the literature that was given to him, that literature did not contain sin. So I don't know which literature was given to you. But if you read the Quran, the Quran also speaks about sin. It speaks about hell. It speaks about punishment. Now the literature that was given to you may be a particular 
topic. Like today's talk, I never spoke about sin because the topic was similarity between Islam and Christianity. But I've given other talks which speak about sin. So the literature that was given to you, brother, was maybe dealing in a particular specialized subject. It may not be dealing with sin. But to say that Islam doesn't speak about sin is wrong. So Quran, like the Bible, also speaks about sin. But the difference in the Bible and the Quran, what the church teaches about the original sin, Quran doesn't believe in that. Which I gave the answer earlier, which I don't intend repeating, that nowhere does the Bible speak about the original sin. It is the teaching of the church. So Quran does not speak about original sin. And like the Bible, as the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter number 18, verse number 20, that the soul that sin shall die, the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, neither shall the son bear the iniquity of the father. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Similarly, the Quran says, no bearer of burden can bear the burden of others. If you commit a sin, you will be responsible. No one else can bear the burden. So Quran also speaks about reward, speaks about punishment, speaks about sin, various things. In my talk, though I didn't mention sin, but indirectly I did mention also about sin. If you have alcohol, it's a sin. If you have pork, it's a sin. If you do adultery, it's a sin. But I was speaking in the positive aspect. Don't have alcohol. Don't have pork. Don't do adultery. So even the Quran speaks about sin. Hope that answers the question. Brother. My name is Krishot Mohan, and I'm a science student. And I'm here with the f uh, help of my Muslim friend, and I'm an atheist. Uh, he used to tell me about religion, but I had few questions, and he could never answer them. So I'm here to ask them to you. Uh, the existence of Quran is known after the birth of Christ. So what happens before the birth of Christ? Like, what happens, and is Adam and Eve true the fact, and what happens to the evolution then?